The Quick Selection tool is a very popular way of selecting elements in your Photoshop images. It's an edge-based tool, but it's also a brush, paintbrush-based tool, and you're selecting by painting over the pixels that you want to keep and using the brush features to do that. So let's try that out. I'm going to go ahead and select my quick selection here. I'm just going to click and hold it. The quick selection is with the magic wand, so you may have one of those tools active. And I'm just going to press that. Notice that you can get that with the W. And if you have the magic wand, you can use the Shift W to cycle through. So there's my quick selection. I'm just going to go ahead and right click on the icon and make sure that I've reset all tools. And that way I know that this tool plus any other tools, I, I'm kind of in that habit of resetting all the tools. But I know this tool is based on the default um, options that it comes with. And so it's going to let me create a new selection and, it's, and let's just get started. So as I start painting here, I'm just holding my mouse down and as I'm painting, you notice as I get to the edge, it's actually creating a selection for me. And it looks like I've got a little too much, so I'm going to go ahead and control D. Oh, here we go. Make sure I'm on the right layer. That always makes a difference. I was painting on a different layer, so it's harder for it to find it. Okay, so now I can go ahead and select, and as I'm selecting, I'm just, I can click, or I can even click and drag, and it's creating that selection for me. It just works really well. I'm going to go over to another balloon over here, and I want you to notice how it's adding to the selection. I didn't even hold down shift. The default here is that when you select with a quick selection, it automatically adds pixels. Now I could go ahead and click on this tool right here to subtract some pixels, but I'm going to keep it at the default. Let's go ahead and just reset that tool. I'm going to keep it at the default. I'm going to hold down Alt myself and just remove the pixels. Sometimes that happens with the click selection is that you can get extra pixels that you didn't want. Now, another important thing is that because this is a brush-based tool, being able to resize the brush actually helps when you're trying to select something. So the bigger the brush, the bigger the selection is going to be, and the smaller the brush, the finer it's going to be. Let's give you an example here. I'm going to use my control and space bar and just drag down it's using the scrubby zoom here to zoom in. And I think I'll actually go ahead and deselect all this. And let's just start with a new selection. And as I'm going in here to create the selection, get that balloon. That works pretty well. But trying to get the basket, that's tricky because it's just this brush is too big. And so I can actually come and change the size of the brush and pull it down a little bit. And with a smaller brush, it's easier to get that basket. Let's go ahead and use the undo command, control Z and just removes it. The other thing you should be aware of is when you're working with brushes, you have the bracket keys. And the bracket keys, it's next to the, the P on your keyboard. The, the right bracket is going to make it larger, and the left bracket is going to make it smaller. And as I'm pressing these bracket keys, notice that the size and the, and the brush is also changing. And so you have some options there. And as you're moving in, you can easily start selecting, just change the bracket or change the brush size and move it down to get what you want. So that's a really nice option with working with these tools. Let's go ahead and control zero. That's going to go and fill to window. That's the same as view, fit on screen here. I'm going to deselect, control D to deselect everything. And let's try a feature in here called auto enhance. Now the auto enhance, as I hover here, it says it's going to automatically enhance the selection edge. It actually just uh, takes care of some of the rough edges as you're going through. It adds a little bit of a feather effect and it softens up that contrast. And since the selection tool really is an edge-based tool, it's going ahead and making the selections based on where it sees some edges. And usually you do want to have a little bit of some feathering or or some softness around that so it doesn't look quite as sharp. So here's an auto enhance and I'm just going to go ahead and mask that. And I didn't do a super, um, took a lot of time to select it, but let's focus here. And you can see how along the edge it's got a soft edge, a little bit of a feather effect 
along the edge. All right, I'm going to make a duplicate of this and remove one of the masks in here. Let's go ahead and fit on screen again. And we're going to try the same thing without the auto enhance. Now notice that I'm using, I'm making that choice before I even make the selection. So here I'm going, making that selection. Just click and holding my mouse, painting it. You could also just keep clicking as long as you wanted, but I kind of like that click and hold. Okay, make it into a mask here. Let's go ahead and zoom into the top. And you might notice that it is a little bit more fuzzy on the top, a little more pixelated here. And just a little bit softer along the edge. And that's the difference. It's very subtle between the auto enhance and the not auto enhance, but that's a neat trick. One other feature that you can take advantage of is this sample all layers feature. I'm going to go ahead and select the option with the horses. And the horses have already been isolated with a mask, but I'm going to go ahead and select them. And I've got my quick selection here. I'll just make the slightly larger brush. And I'm going to go ahead and make a selection. And it's selecting here on those horses. All right. But it didn't quite figure out where the sailboat was, and it's not quite figuring out where the trees are. It's actually just making a selection based on what these horses are. So let's go ahead and deselect and try sample all layers, because this document has a lot of layers, including a sailboat, etc. So I'm going to go ahead and try selecting the horses. Okay. And I'll go ahead and use my Alt command to remove some stuff here. And I'll just go ahead and so select that sailboat. Now one thing that will help too is I'm going to hide the background layer. And so now all I have are the horses and the sailboat. And you can see how because there's no pixels to select on that background layer, it's actually removing or hiding any pixels that I didn't want. So it's a great way of selecting content that might be on multiple layers and you simply hide the pixels that you don't want. Now I can go back and reopen the background and start selecting, but I need to be a little careful because I actually have all these pixels on the palm tree. And that would have been easier if this had been a separate layer. Just go back and reset the tool. Might as well reset all tools while I'm at it. And so the quick selection tool is going to be a very fast, effective way to select images as if you're painting over what you want to select. And then you can manipulate or control that quick selection with the different options.